What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out one of the more fun modifiers inside of Blender, the Displace modifier. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so basically what the Displace modifier does is it takes the vertices of a mesh and it moves them around inside of the 3D space. By doing this, you can use um, either noise or image textures or a lot of different things in order to create really interesting results inside of Blender. So let's take a look at some examples. So if you have a simple surface like this one, right? I tab into it, there's nothing in there, no geometric detail, anything like that. And you apply the modifier to it. So you can go over to the add modifier in your modifier settings. So click on the little wrench, add modifier, displace right here. Notice how nothing interesting is happening, right? So something is happening, but it's not very interesting. So notice how basically what it's doing is it's displacing or it's moving the vertices of this object um, in the normal direction in the 3D space. So what it's doing is it's taking this whole thing and it's moving it around. But because it's applying all of this individually to every vertex in the object, you're just getting this kind of like movement inside of the 3D space, right? So it's just moving everything Thing, which is not really what we want. Same thing would happen if we applied or added a displace modifier to this sphere, right? It's just gonna like displace everything out, um, but it's all gonna be at the same rate. And so what we need to do is we need to tell Blender where to apply that modifier. So for example, let's say that we were to tab into this object. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna subdivide it and we'll go ahead and subdivide it to a level of, we'll call it 10 for right now. But notice how at the moment, Still nothing's changed, but if we come in here and we create like a vertex group, right? So I'm gonna create a vertex group right here. And we'll just go into object data properties, add a vertex group. We'll just call this test group right here. And we'll leave the weight at one right now and we'll click on assign. Well now, if I go back into edit mode and inside of this modifier, I tell this to just displace the vertex group. Notice what that's going to do is that's going to displace the vertices in here that have weight applied to them, right? So it's taking these vertices and it's moving them upwards right here. So this starts getting a little bit interesting because what if we go in here and we go into weight paint mode? So I'm gonna tab in edit mode, I'm gonna go to weight paint mode, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply some kind of like random weights in here right? Something like this. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking that vertex group and I'm applying some additional weight in here like this. Well, what that means is that means that it's now going to apply this effect to multiple different vertices. So now if I go back into object mode and to take a look at this, notice how this is now displacing that geometry in here in all of the locations where there's weight applied to the vertices. And so you can adjust the strength and the mid-level to adjust how far this is being displaced inside your 3D space. So that's a little bit more interesting, right? Um, but what's even more interesting than that is if you've ever used a displacement modifier, you know that in addition to being able to affect the strength, you can also click on this button right here to use a texture in order to displace your object. So let's say we were to click on new right here. So basically what we've done is we've taken this and we've created a new texture that's going to be applied to this object. That texture is going to affect where the displacement is going to occur. And so what we can do is we can come over here and click on the button for show texture and texture tab. Notice how that basically takes us to this tab right here and it's allowing us to adjust this texture 003. And so you can apply different kinds of textures to this object. So for example, you can apply an image or movie, which we'll talk about in a second. So that could be like a displacement map or something like that. But you can also use things like noise. So let's say I was to come in here and select the option for cloud right here. Well, when I select the option for cloud, what that's going to do is that's creating a procedural texture right here. So you can see the texture that's being created and you can adjust things like the size of that material well, basically what that's doing is that's creating this grayscale image and it's displacing things more or less based on the darks and lights of your materials. So you can adjust other settings in here as well to adjust how strong the transition is. So for example, I could adjust that contrast up. Well, notice how when I adjust the contrast up, what that's doing is that's making the darker areas darker, the lighter areas lighter. And that means that this is only being applied to my object in areas where the darks are, or actually where the lights are, I believe. So you can use this in order to create interesting procedural um, displacements inside your model. So let's say we were to take this object right here, and we're going to go ahead and we're gonna add 
this modifier. So we'll do displace modifier, we'll add this material. And so you can use this in order to apply different kinds of noise to this object as a texture. And notice how I can adjust that up or down. But one of the things you might be noticing right now is this really isn't giving us a result that corresponds with what this texture material looks like right? And so the reason for that is actually because we don't have enough geometric detail inside of this object. So if we look at this object, right, if we tab into edit mode, we've got some geometric detail in here, but not enough. And so what it's trying to do is it's trying to apply this displacement in here, but there's a limited number of vertices that it can use in order to do that. So a lot of the time, what you'll end up doing in a situation like this is you might come in here and you might add a subdivision surface modifier first, you don't want to do it second, you want to do it first so that there's more data in here for this to use, but we can turn up that subdivision. We might put it on simple so it doesn't mess up our corners, but notice how what that's doing is that's giving us more detail in here. And so when we have more detail, this can displace things more accurately inside a blender. So notice how now we can use this in order to generate this really cool, um, this really cool texture based displacement inside of our model. And so again, in addition to like cranking up your subdivision, you could also come in here and just add a little more detail. So if I just tab in edit mode, hit A, and then I subdivide this one more time, and then tab out of that, notice how that detail is really going to give me the ability in here to create something really cool. And so what this is doing, right, is this is creating that detail inside of a 3D space. One thing to be aware of, by the way, when you're doing this is you wanna make sure that um, you're not creating too much geometry in here, right? Because what this is doing is this is subdividing this and creating a whole lot of vertices and other things like that. So if you get too heavy with it, while you are gonna get a smoother result, what's gonna start happening is computer's gonna start slowing down because it's trying to do all the calculations in here to make these show up properly. However, what this does do is this gives us a really interesting opportunity, and I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this off for right now, but this gives us a really interesting opportunity to create displacement inside of the 3D space um, using things like material maps. So let's say, for example, that I was to tab into edit mode, and this is already um, this is already subdivided, so we're good there, but we're gonna apply, or we're gonna add a displace modifier. We're gonna add a new texture, but this time, instead of using one of our noise textures, we're gonna use the image or movie. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go pull in a height map that I've downloaded from a texture website. Um, I can't remember where I got this one. You can get them from like texturehaven.com or anything like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add an image. I'm just gonna click on open. So I'm gonna add an image. I'm gonna click on open. And in this case, this is actually something I created from Polygon, but really any height map would work. I'm gonna pull in a height map right here, I'm gonna open that image. Well, notice what this does is this looks like a piece of brick inside of my scene, right? So basically the lights should be up and the darks should be down. And so what this is doing is this is using that in order to create a brick texture on my surface. However, notice how the result, not very good right now, right? So the reason for that is because again, we don't have enough geometric detail in here. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier right here, go ahead and drag this up. And we can go ahead and bump that up a couple times. And even then, we don't quite have enough. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode. I'm just gonna subdivide this again. And now you can see how this is getting a lot closer, but our strength is too strong, right? It's, it's displacing everything way too much. So what we wanna do is we wanna bring the strength inside of our modifier settings down like this. And so when we do that, notice how we're able to create like this brick texture in here um, or, or this actual 3D brick in here by displacing our geometry like this. Notice how if I up my subdivision again, I'm gonna put this on simple. I'm gonna up my subdivision. Notice how this gets even more detailed when we do that. So we can use this in order to fake 3D in here without having to actually come in here and model all this detail ourselves. Now, I will say this is a very expensive way of doing this from a processor standpoint. So I wouldn't do this all over the place, but you could use this in order to quickly generate this 3D geometry inside of this space. So that's kind of an overview of the displace modifier. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. There's a lot of interesting stuff we could do with this in the future. So I will link to some other modifier tutorials on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.